this is one of the things that attract me to Cod Lab, the collaboration. People know very different stuff. I've always been interested in using new techniques to try and answer my questions. And in my thesis work, what I was really interested in was hooking up a motor to the spines that I had and say, well, okay, if I just put a motor on it, then I can move the spine, then I have my animal, right? So I built a lot of different robots. Most of them are dynamic, meaning that they are robots that will navigate their own potential energy and their kinetic energy. This is often seen in the form of hopping, bouncing. We saw that a squirrel, when it interacts with a, a wall or a tree trunk, often will turn its torso to aim the torso towards the tree. And so I wanted to investigate that in a simplified form to really try to isolate just twisting and see if that by itself is important or if we want some sort of coupling. So when I was in kindergarten, we got to talk about pets that we wanted and I said, I want a T-Rex. And my teacher was like, ah, oh, they're not here anymore. And I was like, uh, why? I want a T-Rex. And that's basically when I dedicated my life to this career at the age of five is I wanted a pet T-Rex. And now that I work with bio-inspired roboticists, I'm like, oh, so I won't get the organic one. Well, you're asking, oh, if I build a smaller scaled model of the spine of the fossil, can I scale it up so that I can predict how the real creature would look like. That's very intriguing to me because that's the kind of work that I am doing. A lot of what I've been talking with Asia about is which parts of the evolutionary tree have stiffening spines, where the spine is getting stiffer and stiffer for some reason, in, at least in the twisting dimension. What I try and impress upon the engineers that I work with is Evolution doesn't optimize, but that doesn't mean there aren't optimized forms. They're just somewhere in the fossil record waiting for a paleontologist who is foolish enough to work with engineers to grab them and understand them mechanically. Building robots are hard in the sense that you need to reiterate this design again and again and again. In my work with Dr. Chen, we focused on using origami structures for locomotion. And of course, I'm working with Dr. Asia Carter and trying to understand how we can maybe map the morphology and geometry of the spines to locomotion and gates. And in that work, we're looking at 3D printed spines and trying to understand how they dynamically uh, interact with the, the forces that might come off of a leg. Twist wanted to isolate twisting. When you're thinking about your robots, where you're thinking, okay, I have a 13 degree of freedom robot, and where's my leg, and where's my knee, and where's my ankle, and also is it trotting? We turned to this origami structure. We made this hopper, a Rebo hopper, that has motors on the top, and the leg is made out of the Rebo structure. When the motor activates, it pulls a tendon that compresses your Rebo springs. And when the robot touches the ground, the motor releases the springs, so it pushes itself up to perform dynamic locomotion. The truest thing we have in paleontology are the shapes of the bones. And like puzzle pieces, I can put two vertebrae together and wiggle them relative to each other and, and understand the spaces they can occupy. The second that you leave the kinematic space, going into like any form of, of a mechanical kinetic space, and, and even then, I said, no, 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 that's not enough. I don't want to think about a single spine. I don't want to think about joint by joint behaviors. I want to think globally. We will never see my animals again. They're extinct and extinctions forever. Can we get closer? Can we get close enough that we won't know the difference? The answer is no, but that's, that's what I'm always moving towards and aiming to, to get to. Paleo Robo Zoo. With Asia, I get to learn a lot about the biology and the paleontology side of the things that I don't know. I don't know how animal works. We study how motions work, but animal is complicated. What can biology do uh, that robots can't do? And how do we 
uh, describe it in both cases. Since joining Cod Lab, my vision of the past has only gotten clearer. Is I don't think about my animals as single fossils or single joints or even individuals. I think about them existing the way I see animals now. I see them running, trotting, maybe not, you know, full aerial phase running, but I think of them trotting. I think about them moving quickly. I think about them getting over tree trunks twice their size. And part of my vision is clear because not only can I daydream about that, but I'm starting to develop avenues to test these ideas. And that was so far out of my reach before joining Kylab, I didn't know that world existed.